is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited for today's growing guide because we're going to be talking about how to grow papayas. That's right, papayas indoors. It's something that unfortunately I don't see enough people doing, but something you really should do because if you've ever tried a papaya from the store, they taste kind of nasty. I don't like papayas from the store because they've been picked unripe and they've been shipped hundreds if not thousands of miles and they taste like dirty socks. Now, don't feel offended. That's just our area. It might be completely different in your area, but what I do know is that a ripe papaya that's been picked off of the tree at ripeness and, and cut is some of the juiciest, sweetest, most not stinky fruit you'll ever have. It's, in, it's incredible and it's so delicious and it's so rich in water that it's just, it's a meal all in itself. I really love papayas when they're, when they're fresh and I, even, I really like them even more with a little spritz of lime juice over top. That is how you have a good papaya. So they get a bad rep because of how, you know, how nasty they are in the store. And those are just the two varieties that they grow too. You know, there's so many varieties of papayas, but they only grow the two that have the longest shelf life and are the most shippable. So they can ship them to areas where papayas would never naturally grow. So that is why they get a bad rep. Um, but don't discount them. They're very fun to grow, very easy plant to grow as well. And they produce very quickly if you get a grafted plant. That's one of the first things I wanna talk about is grafted versus non-grafted. So this is a grafted papaya, it's a dwarf papaya. It'll produce at about a year and a half old. And, uh, and so that means that it'll produce at about four feet tall, which is awesome for growing indoors because at four feet tall, it's shorter than I am and it's producing fruit. So that's really nice because you don't have to have vaulted 25 foot ceilings to grow papayas. But if you do have vaulted 25 foot ceilings, grow a, uh, an ungrafted. The reason is because um, an ungrafted variety will produce a lot more fruit. So just know how much uh, space you have and also make sure there's the light that is required at 25 feet tall because papayas will get about 15 to 20 feet tall at full height if they're not grafted. So just make sure you know what you're getting yourself into because you can't prune a papaya. That's one of the things that I think is a very common misconception. Papayas look very tree-like, but the thing is they don't have any lateral growth. Um, papayas grow up and that's it. So if your papaya loses its top or you trim it or you prune it because it gets too tall, it won't produce any fruit. So just keep that in mind. Very, very important to keep that in mind. The next thing uh, that I wanna get into is soil because that's the first part of every growing guide and the first thing that uh, a lot of people unfortunately get wrong. So papayas are grown in places like Florida, um, Hawaii, uh, California. You can grow them in, in tropical environments, zone 11, 12, they grow very well. But papayas uh, do not grow in arid climates um, like a lot of people think they do. They don't grow like avocados. They grow a lot more like, like bananas. They grow in tropical environments with high moisture content in their soil. So what we've done is we've actually planted these in a pot with a very good amount of sphagnum peat moss and coconut husk fiber. This is a uh, promix. For those of you that don't know the, our soil of choice, we use promix. And that is a great soil to hold on to moisture, but not too much because papayas will suffer from root rot very quickly. Papayas are something that you can't uh, just soak the soil because they grow in an environment where they actually prefer to have their soil very well draining. And they also prefer to be slightly root bound, believe it or not. It's crazy to think that a plant would actually prefer to be root bound, but in its natural growing environment, it grows quite root bound. And that really helps the plant do better. So we didn't want to have too much uh, soil moisture. So but we do want the, the soil to hold on to some moisture. So we use Promix, which drains very freely, but holds on to the right amount. Um, and that's just what we've chosen. But if you're doing a DIY version, one part potting mix to one part peat moss, it should do the trick just fine. And, uh, and it should allow that water to drain freely. What I typically say is if you're growing in, this is a, a six gallon pot. If you're growing in a six gallon pot and you take about two gallons of water and dump it over top, you should get water uh, coming out the bottom in about 25 to 30 seconds. That lets you know if you've got that going on that you have a really good well-draining mix and the tree won't be sit, uh, sitting around in standing water for very long. 
The next thing I want to talk about is sunlight. This is definitely a very important component to growing uh, your, your papayas properly, and they need full sun. Shocking, they're tropical, they need full sun. We give these plants, well, they're underneath grow lights, but we give them 16 hours of grow light, light, or if they were growing in like a window, you wanna make sure they get at least six hours of sunlight. That's because any less than six and they're really going to struggle. They need at least six, if not more, sunlight, uh, hours of sunlight. So the more sunlight, the better. A good south-facing window is gonna be awesome. Um, just make sure that they're going to get that those sun uh, those hours of sun. Otherwise, they might survive. But they're definitely not going to fruit, and that's one of the biggest things that people have a problem with is they you know they have a, a seven foot tall papaya but no fruit, and that's because it just doesn't have enough energy being generated to produce the fruit. The next thing I want to talk about is watering. As I stated, it's always kind of connected to the soil, but it's uh, you know it's definitely not as important as the soil component itself because watering is really when the tree needs it. It's not like some of your other crops where you have to be on kind of an infrequent or a frequent schedule. For papayas, they really don't mind being watered that frequently. They're a lot like bananas in that regard. You can water them once a week, you can water them twice a week. As long as you have the right type of soil that drains very freely and you're not watering them so often that all of the soil is always damp, you're not gonna have a problem. Papayas will let you know when you're watering them too frequently because the lower leaves will start to droop first and it'll give you about a week of time to dial back the watering completely and let it dry out before the plant dies. So you have about a week of leeway time. It's not like some of your other plants where if you water them too much, they'll literally just drop dead the next day. Um, so don't worry about it. They're, they're pretty easy to grow in that regard. But then also I wanted to talk about uh, temperature. Temperature is very important. We move these outside once the temperatures get above 60 degrees and they do not drop below 55 degrees. They don't need that, uh, you know, they're not like it's, they are a tropical plant, is what I'm trying to say, but they can tolerate some cool weather. And cool meaning like 55 degrees. Anything below 55 or 50 degrees at minimum, um, you're gonna have some stress. So just make sure, we usually, we usually put them outside once the weather turns about, uh, you know, like early to mid-July time is when we put these outside on our patio, and they do really great. Um, with that comes humidity. Make sure that you have them in about a, uh, 50 to 60% humidity. They are tropical plants. They will benefit from more humidity, but obviously humidity is limited to a certain percentage indoors. As we talked about with the chocolate tree, it's, you know, it's just something you come across when growing tropicals. You can't provide 80 or 90% humidity like they would be getting in their natural environment. So just make sure it's above your normal household temperature by keeping them in, a, in an environment that might have more humidity. Next to a humidifier is what we do, and we have a lot of success with that. One of the things you'll notice about um, your papayas is that the leaves will eventually die. That is actually completely normal. All of these, uh, all this trunk here eventually, at one point had leaves on it, and we just prune off those leaves as they die, and you get this little tuft of leaves up top. That is very natural, and that will happen. Something not to worry about. In fact, it actually is important because when you prune off those leaves, that's actually what will help to set the fruit once it gets large enough is on those branching nodes there. So not a problem, not something I'd worry about. Um, and then the final thing is fertilizing. Fertilizing is very important to growing papayas properly. You wanna make sure that you fertilize them twice a year, sometimes three times a year. We make sure that when we fertilize, we give them a very good nitrogen-based fertilizer, but nothing super high in nitrogen, pretty well balanced. Um, we give them Trifecta Plus. Trifecta Plus is what we give everything in the garden, but we also make sure to give them a little bit of fish emulsion or uh, blood meal. The blood meal helps to make sure that those leads are really nice and large, helps them produce well, uh, and helps them grow quickly because papayas are very fast growing once they get established. Um, and then the final thing that I wanted to talk about is the pot size. Um, again, papayas like to be root bound. They do not like to have a ton of soil. So we transplanted this from a smaller little one gallon container up to the six gallon container, and this will be where it lives its entire life. This will not move uh, its entire life. It'll stay in this container and it will produce fruit in this container. And again, you might think that's crazy, but again, they actually do better when they're slightly root bound. Um, the more root bound they are, the better they'll be. Um, so don't ask me why, but that's how everyone grows them in containers and that's how I've been growing them as well for many years and they really truly enjoy it. So um, 
Don't, don't up pot to a giant container right off the bat and you should be fine. Let the plant tell you when it needs to be uh, transplanted and then once it gets about this tall, about a foot and a half, two feet tall, move it to its final container, about five and a half, six gallon pot and you should be fine. So that's all you need to do to grow papayas successfully. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something new. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to like this video, subscribe if not yet already, and we'll catch you all later. See ya, bye.